You know, sometimes I just like to open up the handle because I can't read the notes, so I just let's try this one. Yeah. Let's <laughs> say, what's this one sound like? And you know, we know this one, don't we? Do we know this one? No. Um, <coughs> pardon me. <coughs> So the prayer was said last week, well, I hope your cold gets better, and it did, and it's still hanging on, but I hope it dies soon. Um, it's, uh, who, who else, who else really enjoys being sick? Anybody? Okay, we all hate it, right? Good. Growing. <laughs> we don't have to go to school. Yes, we do. Some of us, some of us have to go to school even if they're feeling sick. So. I praise the Lord for last Sunday. What a wonderful day we had. What a great uh, uh, guest we had. What stories she had to tell us, and that was wonderful. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Please bear with me as I honk and sneeze my way through this. Um, we are in. Oh man. Between Sue's laugh and Bill's going, you know, Bill saying what he said. I decided not to take any medicine this morning, so I'm not on drugs. Uh, it's hard enough to think through what feels like a couple of rolls of insulation. Yeah. <coughs> so, we're still in this letter, this long letter, from our friend Paul, the letter that he wrote to... Ephesus, the church is in Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> um, the more I look at some of these letters, the more I feel like absolutely nothing has changed. I, my argument with people saying, well, I, can, I feel like I seriously think the end times are coming. I think they've always been here. <laughs> Nothing has changed. There's only more people doing it now. That's the only difference. And, and as far as ratios are concerned, they're all still the same. And I say that because of the things that uh, chapter 5 ends with. <coughs> We are a unique group here in West Corners Baptist Church. Um, we started at some point a number of years ago allowing into membership people that would not have been considered in other Baptist churches. And that's just a fact. I don't say it for us to pat ourselves on the back or anything like that. Um, but we are, <coughs> I feel, a group, a brotherhood in the Lord um, who tries their best to exemplify the teachings of Christ, not the teachings of a certain convention that took place somewhere in the United States at some point in time. Not even the Council of Nicaea all those years ago. We invite sinners in. The stinkier, the stinkier you are, the better. Because we had to have a place to go. Because other churches think that they're, I don't know. I don't know what the word would be. Too good for us. We're not being held accountable. That's what our problem is. That's why marriages have failed. That's why children have left home. That's why some kids grew up and not believing in the Lord anymore. And I'm sorry, but, you know, Jesus was teaching about this stuff for a very long time, three plus years. K 
kids running in church, you know, just hiding on each other, playing games when they're supposed to be sitting down. What a mess we are. Paul is writing to churches that were nothing like this one, and they were just as much a mess as we are. And he had to come up with some reminders for us. And it's hard to go through it because we all make mistakes and we're all paying for them. We don't do what the doctors tell us to do. We don't do what certain others have advised us to do. Despite what, it, despite the, whether it's good advice or not, we don't like to pay attention. We get bored easy. Mm -hmm. Right, right, guys? Yeah. Yes, a lot. a lot. Let's face it, this is boring. Except, except that if you listen to the word of the Lord, you'll find something in it that you can use when you're in school next week. Because, guess what? You're going to run across some real jerks. And sometimes that jerk is going to be you. And you don't even know it yet. And then you'll remember, oh, brother, I was supposed to do this, and I didn't do that. Ah. Uh, and you'll remember, hopefully, that you have a Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ that you can go and pray to. And he can help fix you. And that goes for kids of any age. Any age. Chapter 5 of Ephesians starts this way. Be you, therefore, followers of God as dear children. Why children? Why children? Is he writing to kids? No, he's running to adults. But he's saying, be as children. Why? Well, I didn't come up with one pretty good reason. Jesus said, bring all the kids you can to me. <laughs> he essentially said that. I mean, the Bible puts it in a different way, but he's saying, no, 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 no. You don't send the kids away. I want them. Bring them here. When the adults were standing up acting adultish and everything, oh, the teacher is too busy for kids. Jesus doesn't have time for you kids. Jesus, he's an important guy. He doesn't have time. All your nonsense and foolishness and running around and drawing and you're supposed to be paying attention and stuff like that. Jesus doesn't have that. Jesus said, I want you guys here with me. I love you. That's why he said it. Because he knew the adults had their own version of that. It's called looking out the window and worrying about a bill. It's called looking out the window saying, I really wish this would go away. I really wish this situation, I, just, I don't know what to do. I just, it's, it's, I'm at my wit's end. I've had it. I can't take any more. And I'm in church and things are still going on. And this all sucks. And there we are. We have our, that's our version of what they do. Kids running around. We run around all the time. In our heads, we don't get up because some of us are too old, but we do it all the time. And we're no better. And I believe this church, this group of people right here in West Barnes understands that or does their best to try to understand it. Why do we need grace anyway? I'll tell you what, there's evil in each one of us. There's this evil creature wanting to get out, wanting to destroy. I've always thought with the, with the help of Christ, you take that thing by the throat, right by the throat, so it can't talk anymore, and you say, shut your mouth, you're not winning today. And that's the power of Christ through me. I wish I could state emphatically that every day is a success. It's not. Because sometimes that evil wins. Well, you don't have enough faith. Nonsense. I've got all the faith in the world, but something's not working. I'm 
I'm distracted or something. Something makes me angry and I just can't clear the hurdle. And I'm still angry about it. Something hurts so bad, it just sticks. And I can't get rid of it. I have this dumb head cold. It should have been over by Sunday evening. I don't care that I got it last Sunday afternoon. It should have been done. <laughs> I'm doing everything right. I'm drinking water. I'm taking the medicine. I'm like, you know, being good. I'm like, and still it's here. And I'm like, Arr! I'm doing everything right. Get rid of it. And he's going, nope. And I'm like, oh. And I'm angry. Or I'm sad. I'm more sad than I know what to do with. I, know, I don't know how to fix it. I, and I know I should be joyous. Be, Jesus loves me and grace and everything is great. And wait till you get to heaven. I'm here now. I'm having problems right now. And no, I'm not happy about it. And what do I do about it? When you're a kid... You feel like that. And hopefully, because you're a kid, that only lasts for a little while. And then kids, they, pop, they bounce back pretty good. Sometimes they, they get over stuff real quick. Other times they don't. Other times they don't. Sometimes there's something that happens when you're a kid that sticks with you your whole life. And it still hurts like you did when you were seven. Or nine. 12. And then when these kids grow up, we're like, well, you need, you need a stronger faith. <laughs> Don't you forget what it was like to be a kid? Be you, therefore, followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. And then Paul gets one on one of his list. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becomes saints. Saints, of course, are people who try very hard not to let any of that stuff creep into their lives. Some of them, fairly successful. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. So Bill, stop joking with me the way you do. Jesting isn't cool, according to Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul's point is, of course, don't do without humor, guys. That's not his point. We need to be real serious all the time. Well, that's a good way to get a heart attack. Huh? I'm sorry, I can't act like <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> <clears throat> this is serious stuff. We should be taking this very seriously. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely seriously. But don't forget, Jesus joked around with his disciples. My favorite Jesus moment, I call it a Jesus Bugs Bunny moment. <laughs> Is after he's resurrected, he comes up between the two guys on the road. Hi, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> like he didn't know. He said, well, we're talking about this Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. Oh, really? Well, I have to tell me. That's funny. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not don't, you know, absolutely get rid of every joke and all that stuff. What type of jesting is he talking about? When it's time to be serious, take things serious. Right? My mom and dad tried very futilely for a lot of years. There's a time and place for everything. There's a time to be funny. There's a time not to be funny. That was usually when I was a kid in school and I was joking around and the teacher got mad and I got, you know, something. <laughs> <clears throat> Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Foolish talking. Now that's different than jesting, isn't it? What would foolish talking be? Anybody got a phone on them? Can you quick look to Facebook? 98% of what's on that is foolish talking. 
some days it's 105 percent. Yeah. yeah. What other kinds of foolish talking is there? Arguing about what we know nothing of. Well, it's John. John and I, Corey and I, Amy and I, Bill and I, David and I, Gladys and I, Grace and I, David and I, John and I, Marlene and I have talked about things regarding this book that we're not 100% on the same side about. And we argue about it sometimes to the point where one of us starts getting a little miffed. Well, that's dumb. Because the answer is with the author, who will answer it in his time. And to get upset with each other about it is cause for concern. To the point where it, where it gets nasty, that's, that's foolish. That's foolish. There needs to be some other way to reason things out. God said, come, let us reason together. We're never, ever going to agree, as a group, 100% on everything. We agree on a number of important things, and we stand on them the best we know how, guided by the light of the Spirit, guided by the light of His Word, guided by the information that's here, guided by Christ, guided by the fact that He wants us to be together in unity, you know, but when it comes time to eat ice cream downstairs, guess what? There's going to be different flavors. Or That's the facts, on. Jack. It's just the way it is. But to, to get it to the point where I can't stand being around set person. Why? Because they like to make the wall and ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's just as stupid. That person thinks that, the, you know, they may not be 100% sold on the pre-trib, pre-mill thing. Uh, you know what? That's dumb. I'm sorry. That's just really stupid. When Paul was writing this, people were encountering something new. This was vitally important. And, and just about anything outside of what Paul was trying to teach these people is foolish. So something important to Ephesus, a citizen of Ephesus, Paul was going, don't pay attention to that. This is really important. And Paul could get a little, you know, overzealous sometimes. So, yes. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not fitting, or some of you will have a different word than fitting. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Convenient, some of you may have. Out of, place. out of place. They're out of place. They're not all that important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Jesus died for unclean people. Jesus died for fornicators. Jesus died for covetous people. Idolaters. That's who half these people are that he's writing to. So what's his point? Repent. Don't be like that no more. Go the other way. Stop it. Behave. Again, let this lead you. Let the Spirit lead you in how to act. Let, man, let no man, verse 6, deceive you with vain words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the sons of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. <coughs> For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. 
and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in, of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for what, whatever doth make manifest is light. You can't see your secrets. Anybody heard the name Harvey Weinstein lately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is no this is no secret. This this big shot in Hollywood, this multimillionaire who had power over 